Red Rum Renegades of Long Beach Roller Derby, and you're watching Moonkill Radio. Another edition of what is on the slab. Yeah. Welcome, people, uh, to what's on the slab. Again, before we get into this one, this this just again, give a, you know, some shout outs to some people. Uh, we want to give a shout outs to uh, Chiquita Banana, of course. Um, give a shout out to Eddie, Eddie Moon. All right. This is like, you know, Eddie Moon, extended family, right? Want to give a shout out to George, of course, man, our partner in crime. Hope, uh, hope you guys are digging the, the sound on, on our, our live sessions. Um, and shout out to people watching, man, and, you know, participating in this and, you know, and please stay safe and healthy out there. Of course, there's crazy times and, you know, all that good stuff. Take care of yourselves, you know. Um, Again, Bros, hit the subscribe button, the like button, leave comments, any kind of comments you wish, anything you wish, good or bad, leave it. If you got anything for us, Radio at Gmail. Check us out. Check out our, our segments here, What's on the Slab, New Music Mondays, live at Moonkill, um, interviews, uh, and hopefully uh, you know we're out there and about uh, doing some shows and stuff, or at least going to shows and Maybe take a footage of that stuff. So this one, yeah, let's see. So we did a Slayer one, all right? We did a Slayer one. So we'll get to this band. And there's a lot of mixed feelings about this band, even though, it's, you know, of course, they're one of the most popular out there, of course. Uh, but this album, of course, we this is the first time we heard, personally heard this band. First time I ever heard of this band. Uh, it's Metallica. Right, ride the lightning. That's right. This is the first time I heard this band. It was for whom the bell tolls. It was the first song I ever heard. I remember hearing by Metallica, and thinking, "What the fuck was that? What did I just listen to? That yeah, was crazy." And you know, and I grew up in a house. That played a lot of Iron Maiden and UFO and, and Judas Priest and all that early metal stuff. But <coughs> this was some other shit right here, man. This was like a whole nother drug, man. I'm telling you. Uh, then I found it. Oh, actually, I didn't buy anything until Master of Puppets. But I went back. Of course, I got a, you know, a couple years older. I went back. And found this one. Oh, that's what that song is at. Bam. Then you bought the first one. You know, blah, 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 blah. Whatever. But this one always, always has a special. It's not my favorite Metallic album. It's not my favorite, but it's my second favorite album that they do. Um, But it is special because, again, this is where I first heard them. What is this? 1984. All right. You still got. Let's see, still got Cliff in here. Check that action out. Still have the sleeve. Still have the sleeve. Isn't that something? Um, look at these guys. Look at those guys, man. Man. It's like a bunch of bunch of folios over here, man. Cliff Burton on bass. James Hetfield, rhythm, guitar, vocals. Lars, Lars Ulrich and Kirk Hammett. Wow. Get, there you go. The little, little lyric sheet for those that need it. Some of us don't need them anymore because we listen to the living shit out of this album. Uh, Electra Records. Yeah, kind of beat up. But got some playage on there, man. Yes, it does have Miles and Miles. And this is one of those ones that I've owned record, tape, and CD, multiple CDs, and multiple tapes of this one. Um, 
Yeah, look at that, man. Let's look at that shit. Right? Metal Mega Force Records along with Electra. Again, you guys, you know what? Leave in the comment section. What where does this rank in your Metallica albums? All right, this is my second favorite. My first is Injustice for All. This is my second favorite one. Uh, of course, my top four are, are the first four albums. Along, I do love Death Magnetic uh, and the uh, wire was it Wireless or whatever that one is. Yeah, I listen to it. I like it. Uh, I think they're kind of pushing it though. They were kind of like, I don't know. To me, it just seemed like on the new one, the last one, they were kind of re uh, trying too hard to sound like a a thrash band instead of just it's just in them. You know what I mean? It's not in them anymore. Uh, but Death Magnetic was I thought was good. I thought that the, it didn't sound that good. Uh, and along I'm along with Eddie Trunk. If anyone knows who Eddie Trunk is, I'm with Eddie Trunk. I've been for years thinking that it wasn't sounding a great sounding record. Death Magnetic. Uh, it's a great record, but it wasn't a great sounding record. Like it, something on the engineering part, or whatever. It just sounded like shit, man. Yeah, just put in the headphones, listen to it, man. It just sounds, I don't know, sounds like shit. But Ride the Lightning, classic LP, classic thrash record, their second LP. Uh, to me, their heaviest record or their, their thrashiest record. I think their fastest record. Um, this was kind of, you know, the... the, the I think it's the beauty of Metallica was they were never just a straight speed metal band. You know, they they had a lot of like heavy, heavy hard rock influences. And you could tell by the riffing they were doing, even though some of this, you know, of course, throughout the years was written by Mustaine, who was fucking awesome. You know, uh, what can you say about Mustaine uh, other than, you know, besides he, who he is as a person, but his songwriting abilities. Or fucking awesome, dude. Um, and this has probably one of my most favorite tracks of all time by them. It starts off with Fight Fire with Fire, which is one of the best tracks they've ever done. That is a fucking great song. Uh, Ride the Lightning, of course, which, um, yeah, I know it might be blasphemy, but I'm not like a big fan of that song. I'm not. Sorry, people out there but i'm not a big fan of ride the lightning track uh then for whom the bell tolls that was my first time i ever heard them uh fade to black that was first side then you flip her over to the side two trapped in the ice escape another track that i wasn't too fond of you know like uh, i'll get to that later uh but and then creeping death you know creeping fucking death Give a shit how many times you hear it, they play it, or uh, uh, you watch tribute bands that play it. That song is forever just a fucking epic track. Uh, then the call of uh, T Tulu, Cthulhu, whatever you call it, which was, which to me is where the Cliff Burton part of this, you know, the Cliff Burton side of Metallica. You know, again, they, they, you know, they, they were a, 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 a hard rocking band. They just played it thrashy style, whatever. But you could tell, man, Cliff. I mean, I don't never met the guy. I don't know him, but Cliff Burton was just a fucking rocking soul. You know, again, you know, not a lot of metal bands put out bass solos. You know, still don't. They did on the first album. And he jammed the shit out of it, right? Again, the call of T Cthulhu along with, uh, what's the one, um, Orion. You know, instrumentals. You know, and Just For All had that instrumental, which I can't remember the name anymore, you know, with Dyer's Eve and shit, you know. That, you know, but that shows to me like a diversity of, you know, their, their musicianship, which is not around, which is not around anymore. You know, but they, they came out of that jamming era, 
you know, but still played, you know, heavy, fast music. But I think he helped keep that alive, just that the soul of, of hard rocking, you know. After he was gone, it was a whole different, even though they made my favorite album after he was gone. And and then after that, it kind of showed he was gone. <laughs> After the Black Album. Once the Black Album hit, <coughs> there was no, to me, there was no cliff left. And that proved it. Uh, for anybody who wants an argument, yes, I am not. Never have been a fan of the Black Album. I hated it since day one. I hate it today. You know, I do not hold grudges, but I hold grudge against that album. Um, and I have a lot of reasons for it. But, yeah, so, I mean, if you want to leave comments in there, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm one of those. I am totally one of those, one of those haters. Yeah, after the Just For All, they came out on Black Album. Hate, what is it? The, uh, Living, the Living Color hated it. Yeah, hated it. I couldn't stand it. And I still can't stand it. You know, I can appreciate it more now as I'm older. But I still, I've never owned it. Never bought it. I remember being being at a Tower Records in L.A. when it came out, and people were just trashing the shit out of it. You know, guys were lined up in their cars waiting to buy it, and coming out to your car, and everybody's got beers and shit, you know, and playing it in their cars, and like, what is this fucking shit, you know? You know, and then half the people were trashing it. The other half were like, oh, my God, it's the, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, you know? But again, this to me is a special album. I mean, I can say, "Hey, go listen to it," but I'm sure many of you have already heard it. Um, all I can say is, listen to "Fight Fire with Fire," the opening track, because that is one of the best songs. I've never heard them do live. I've seen them a few times, and I've never heard them do that live ever. And it's one of the baddest tracks they ever did. You know. Um, yeah, not much more to say, man. It's Metallica, Ride Lightning, but, you know, again, it's just another one in our collection, but one that I still play to death. And, yes, I love those more than Master Puppets, which is supposed to be the, you know, quote-unquote best thrash album of all time, which is not my opinion. Uh, Master Puppets, I played the crap out of, of course, like everybody else when it came out, but not a fan of it anymore, not as much, not at all, really. I don't play it. I haven't played it in a long time. I have it, but it's just, you know, it's whatever. But there you go. <coughs> <coughs> there you go. So leave leave your comments uh, in the section. Leave any kind of comments, man, uh, that you wish. And, you know, in the comment section, subscribe, like, uh, listen to whatever artists we're featuring, even if it is popular, popular ones like this. Um if you have not heard them, then cool. Go listen to them, man. Um, yeah, and uh, leave any kind of comments you wish. Again, if you have anything for us to review, uh, send us to uh, moonkillradio at gmail. And um, um, uh, what should we call it? You know, and uh, leave your own little review. Oh, another little tidbit. Uh, when this came out, and it's still, even after, for a long time after it came out, uh, you would hear Fade to Black. Yeah, that was one track that that you would hear um, on rock radio. No, not, not so much rock radio. You would hear on KNAC as far as LA goes, KNAC 105.5, and you would hear on K-Rock. Yes, the, the K-Rock, the, 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 the alternative, you know, whatever new wave uh, station. Uh, they would play Fade to Black. I would hear it on there a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, it's another little thing for you, you know, especially when it came out, even after it came out, even when like Master Puppets came out, they would play Fade to Black still, uh, once in a once in a great while they would they would put it on there, All right? So yeah, little tidbit for you there. Um, again, leave your comments, hit us up, subscribe, listen to our uh, uh, our bands that we feature, check out our other segments. All right, have guys stay safe, take care of yourselves. All right, Moo Kill, we're out.